Absinthe, Wikipedia article audio. Absinthe is historically described as a distilled, highly alcoholic beverage. It is an anise-flavored spirit derived from botanicals, including the flowers and leaves of Artemisia absinthium, together with green anise, sweet fennel and other medicinal and culinary herbs. Absinthe traditionally has a natural green color but may also be colorless. It is commonly referred to in historical literature as La Fée Verte. Although it is sometimes mistakenly referred to as a liqueur, absinthe is not traditionally bottled with added sugar, it is therefore classified as a spirit. Absinthe is traditionally bottled at a high level of alcohol by volume, but it is normally diluted with water prior to being consumed. Etymology History Absinthe originated in the canton of Neuchâtel in Switzerland in the late 18th century. It rose to great popularity as an alcoholic drink in late 19th and early 20th century France, particularly among Parisian artists and writers. Owing in part to its association with Bohemian culture, the consumption of absinthe was opposed by social conservatives and prohibitionists. Ernest Hemingway, James Joyce, Charles Baudelaire, Paul Verlaine, Arthur Rimbaud, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, Amadeo Modigliani, Pablo Picasso, Vincent van Gogh, Oscar Wilde, Marcel Proust, Alistair Crowley, Eric Satie, Edgar Allan Poe, Lord Byron, and Alfred Jerry were all known absinthe drinkers. Absinthe has often been portrayed as a dangerously addictive psychoactive drug and hallucinogen. The chemical compound thuchone, although present in the spirit in only trace amounts, was blamed for its alleged harmful effects. By 1915, absinthe had been banned in the United States and in much of Europe, including France, the Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland, and Austria-Hungary. Although absinthe was vilified, it has not been demonstrated to be any more dangerous than ordinary spirits. Recent studies have shown that absinthe's psychoactive properties have been exaggerated. A revival of absinthe began in the 1990s, following the adoption of modern European Union food and beverage laws that removed long-standing barriers to its production and sale. By the early 21st century, nearly 200 brands of absinthe were being produced in a dozen countries, most notably in France, Switzerland, Australia, Spain, and the Czech Republic. The French word absinthe can refer either to the alcoholic beverage or, less commonly, to the actual wormwood plant, with Grande absinthe being Artemisia absinthium and Petite Absinthe being Artemisia Pontica. The Latin name Artemisia comes from the Greek T. S. A. Wormwood and the latter from Artemis, the ancient Greek goddess of the hunt. Absinthe is derived from the Latin Absinthium, which in turn comes from the Greek Absinthion, Wormwood. The use of Artemisia absinthium in a drink is attested in Lucretius de Rerum Natura, where Lucretius indicates that a drink containing wormwood is given as medicine to children in a cup with honey on the brim to make it drinkable. Some claim that the word means undrinkable in Greek, but it may instead be linked to the Persian root spand or aspand, or the variant esfand, which meant peganum harmala also called Syrian rue although it is not actually a variety of rue, another famously bitter herb. That Artemisia absinthium was commonly burned as a protective offering may suggest that its origins lie in the reconstructed Proto-Indo-European root asterisk spend, meaning to perform a ritual or make an offering. Whether the word was a borrowing from Persian into Greek, or from a common ancestor of both, is unclear. Alternatively, the Greek word may originate in a pre-Greek substrate word, 
marked by the non-Indo-European consonant complex. Alternative spellings for absinthe include absinthe, absinthe, and absentat. Absinthe is a spelling variant most commonly applied to absinths produced in Central and Eastern Europe, and is specifically associated with Bohemian-style absinths. The precise origin of absinthe is unclear. The medical use of wormwood dates back to ancient Egypt, and is mentioned in the Ebers Papyrus, c. 1550 BC. Wormwood extracts and wine-soaked wormwood leaves were used as remedies by the ancient Greeks. Moreover, there is evidence of the existence of a wormwood-flavored wine, absinthites oinos, in ancient Greece. Rapid Growth of French Consumption The first clear evidence of absinthe in the modern sense of a distilled spirit containing green anise and fennel, however, dates to the 18th century. According to popular legend, absinthe began as an all-purpose patent remedy created by Dr. Pierre Ordinaire, a French doctor living in Cuvette, Switzerland, around 1792. Ordinaire's recipe was passed on to the Henriade sisters of Cuvette, who sold absinthe as a medicinal elixir. By other accounts, the Henriade sisters may have been making the elixir before Ordinaire's arrival. In either case, a certain Major Dubit acquired the formula from the sisters and in 1797, and with his son Marcelin and son-in-law Henry Louis Pernot, opened the first absinthe distillery, Dubit Per E.T. Fills, in Cuvette. In 1805, they built a second distillery in Pontarlier, France, under the new company name Maison Pernod Fils. Pernod Fils remained one of the most popular brands of absinthe up until the drink was banned in France in 1914. Absinthe's popularity grew steadily through the 1840s, when absinthe was given to French troops as a malaria preventive. When the troops returned home, they brought their taste for absinthe home with them. The custom of drinking absinthe gradually became so popular in bars, bistros, cafés, and cabarets that, by the 1860s, the hour of 5 p.m. was called lure verte. Absinthe was favored by all social classes, from the wealthy bourgeoisie, to poor artists and ordinary working-class people. By the 1880s, mass production had caused the price of absinthe to drop sharply. By 1910, the French were drinking 36 million litres of absinthe per year, as compared to their annual consumption of almost 5 billion litres of wine. International Consumption Absinthe was exported widely from its native France and Switzerland and attained some degree of popularity in other countries, including Spain, Great Britain, USA, and the Czech Republic. Absinthe was never banned in Spain or Portugal, and its production and consumption have never ceased. It gained a temporary spike in popularity there during the early 20th century, corresponding with the French-influenced Art Nouveau and Modernism aesthetic movements. New Orleans has a profound cultural association with absinthe, and is credited as the birthplace of the Sazerac, perhaps the earliest absinthe cocktail. The old Absinthe House Bar, located on Bourbon Street, sold absinthe since the first half of the 19th century. Its Catalan leaseholder, Cayetano Ferrer, named it the Absinthe Room in 1874 because of the popularity of the drink, which was served in the Parisian style. The building was frequented by many famous people, including Mark Twain, Oscar Wilde, Franklin Roosevelt, Aleister Crowley, and Frank Sinatra. Absinthe has been consumed in the Czech countries since at least 1888 notably by Czech artists, 
some of whom had an affinity for Paris, frequenting Prague's famous Café Slavia. Its wider appeal in Bohemia itself is uncertain, though it was sold in and around Prague. It is claimed that at least one local liquor distillery in Bohemia was producing absinthe at the turn of the 20th century. Vans Spurred by the temperance movement and the winemakers' associations, absinthe was publicly associated with violent crimes and social disorder. Modern Revival One critic claimed Production Absinthe makes you crazy and criminal, provokes epilepsy and tuberculosis, and has killed thousands of French people. It makes a ferocious beast of man, a martyr of woman, and a degenerate of the infant, it disorganizes and ruins the family and menaces the future of the country. Edgar Degas 1876 Painting L. Absinthe, which can be seen at the Musée d'Orsay, epitomized the popular view of absinthe addicts as sodden and benumbed. Although Emile Zola mentioned absinthe only once by name, he described its effects in his novel Ella Samoyer. Distilled Absinthe In 1905, it was reported that Jean Lanfray, a Swiss farmer, murdered his family and attempted to take his own life after drinking absinthe. The fact that Lanfray was an alcoholic who had consumed considerable quantities of wine and brandy prior to drinking two glasses of absinthe was overlooked or ignored, therefore placing the blame for the murders solely on absinthe. The Lanfray murders were the tipping point in this hotly debated topic, and a subsequent petition to ban absinthe in Switzerland collected more than 82,000 signatures. A referendum was subsequently held on banning the drink on July 5, 1908. After it was approved by voters, the prohibition of absinthe was then written into the Swiss constitution. In 1906, both Belgium and Brazil banned the sale and distribution of absinthe, although these were not the first countries to take such action. Absinthe had been banned as early as 1898 in the colony of the Congo Free State. The Netherlands banned absinthe in 1909, Switzerland in 1910, the United States in 1912, and France in 1914. The prohibition of absinthe in France would eventually lead to the popularity of pastis, and to a lesser extent, ouzo and other anise-flavored spirits that do not contain wormwood. Following the conclusion of the First World War, production of the Pernod Fils brand was resumed at the Banis Distillery in Catalonia, Spain, but gradually declining sales saw the cessation of production in the 1960s. In Switzerland, the ban served only to drive the production of absinthe underground. Clandestine home distillers produced colorless absinthe, which was easier to conceal from the authorities. Many countries never banned absinthe, notably Britain, where it had never been as popular as in continental Europe. In the 1990s, realizing the UK had never formally banned absinthe, British importer BBH Spirits began to import Hills Absinthe from the Czech Republic, which sparked a modern resurgence in absinthe's popularity. In countries where absinthe was never banned or truly popular, absinthe began to reappear during the revival in the 1990s. Absinthe's available during that time consisted almost exclusively of Czech, Spanish, and Portuguese brands that were of recent origin, typically consisting of Bohemian-style products. Absinthe connoisseurs considered these of inferior quality and not representative of the 19th century spirit. Cold Mixed Absinthe In 2000, La Fille absinthe became the first commercial absinthe distilled and bottled in France since the 1914 ban. Originally produced for export, 
it is now one of dozens of French absinths that are produced and sold within France. Ingredients In the Netherlands, the restrictions on the manufacture and sale of absinthe were successfully challenged by the Amsterdam wine cellar, Menno Boersma, in July 2004, thus confirming the legality of absinthe once again. Similarly, Belgium lifted its long-standing absinthe ban on January 1, 2005, citing a conflict with the adopted food and beverage regulations of the single European market. In Switzerland, the constitutional ban on absinthe was repealed in 2000 during an overhaul of the national constitution, although the prohibition was simultaneously rewritten into ordinary law instead. That law was later repealed such that as of March 1, 2005, absinthe was made again legal in its country of origin. Absinthe is once again distilled and sold in its Val de Traverse birthplace, with Cubular and La Clandestine Absinthe among the first new brands to emerge. Blanche, or La Bluey, Blanche Absinthe is bottled directly following distillation and reduction and is uncolored. The name La Bluey was originally a term used for bootleg Swiss absinthe, but has become a popular term for post band style Swiss absinthe in general. Vert absinthe begins as a blanche. The blanche is altered by the coloring step, by which a separate mixture of herbs is steeped into the clear distillate. This confers a peridot green hue and an intense flavor. Verts represent the prevailing type of absinthe that was found in the 19th century. Artificially colored green absinths may also claim to be vert, though they lack the characteristic herbal flavors that result from the coloring process. Absenta is sometimes associated with a regional style that often differed slightly from its French cousin. Traditional absentas may taste slightly different due to their use of alicante anise, and often exhibit a characteristic citrus flavor. Hoska matched refers to clandestine absinthe that is home distilled by hobbyists. It should not be confused with absinthe kits. Hoska matched absinthe is produced in tiny quantities for personal use and not for the commercial market. Clandestine production increased after absinthe was banned, when small producers went underground, most notably in Switzerland. Although the ban has been lifted in Switzerland, some clandestine distillers have not legitimized their production. Authorities believe that high taxes on alcohol and the mystique of being underground are likely reasons. Bohemian-style absinthe is also referred to as Czech-style absinthe, anise-free absinthe, or just absinthe, and is best described as a wormwood bitters. It is produced mainly in the Czech Republic, from which it gets its designation as Bohemian or Czech, although not all absinths from the Czech Republic are Bohemian-style. Bohemian-style absinthe typically contains little or none of the anise, fennel, and other herbal flavors associated with traditional absinthe, and thus bears very little resemblance to the absinths made popular in the 19th century. Typical Bohemian-style absinthe has only two similarities with its authentic, traditional counterpart, it contains wormwood and has a high alcohol content. The Czechs are credited with inventing the fire ritual in the 1990s, possibly because Czech absinthe does not luge, which renders the traditional French preparation method useless. As such, this type of absinthe and the fire ritual associated with it are entirely modern fabrications, and have little to no relationship with the historical absinthe tradition. While the drink was never officially banned in Spain, it began to fall out of favor in the 1940s, and almost vanished into obscurity. The Catalan region has seen significant resurgence since 2007, when one producer established operations there. Absinthe has never been illegal to import or manufacture in Australia. 
Importation requires a permit under the Customs Regulation 1956 due to a restriction on importing any product containing oil of wormwood. In 2000, an amendment proposed by Food Standards Australia New Zealand as part of a new consolidation of the food code across Australia and New Zealand, made all wormwood species prohibited herbs for food purposes under Food Standard 1.4.4. Prohibited and Restricted Plants and Fungi However, this amendment was found inconsistent with other parts of the pre-existing food code. The proposed amendment was withdrawn in 2002 during the transition between the two codes, thereby continuing to allow absinthe manufacture and importation through the existing permit-based system. These events were erroneously reported by the media as Australia having reclassified it from a prohibited product to a restricted product. Since this clarification was made, what is claimed to be the first Australian-produced brand of absinthe was released in 2007. British Columbia, New Brunswick, no established limits on thujone content, Alberta, Ontario, 10 mg kg, Manitoba, 6 8 mg, Quebec, 15 mg kg, Newfoundland and Labrador. Absinthe sold in provincial liquor store outlets, Nova Scotia. Absinthe sold in provincial liquor store outlets, Prince Edward Island. Absinthe is not sold in provincial liquor store outlets, but one brand produced on the island can be procured locally, Saskatchewan. Only one brand listed in provincial liquor stores, although an Individual is permitted to import one case of any liquor. In 2007, the French Lucid brand became the first genuine absinthe to receive a cola for importation into the United States since 1912, following independent efforts by representatives from Lucid and Kubler to overturn the long-standing U.S. ban. In December 2007, St. George Absinthe Vert, produced by St. George Spirits of Alameda, California, became the first brand of American-made absinthe produced in the United States since the ban. Since that time, other microdistilleries have started producing small-batch artisanal absinths in the U.S. Alternative Coloring Bottled Strength Kids Alternatives The 21st century has seen new modalities for absinthe, including various frozen preparations, which have become increasingly popular. The product must be thujone free as per TTB guidelines, the word absinthe can neither be the brand name nor stand alone on the label, and the packaging cannot project images of hallucinogenic, psychotropic, or mind-altering effects. In May 2011, the French absinthe ban of 1915 was repealed following petitions by the Fédération Française des Spiritueux, who represent French distillers. Most countries have no legal definition for absinthe whereas the method of production and content of spirits such as whiskey, brandy, and gin are globally defined and regulated. As such, producers are at liberty to label a product as absinthe or absinthe without regard to any specific legal definition or quality standards. Producers of legitimate absinths employ one of two historically defined processes to create the finished spirit, distillation or cold mixing. In the sole country that does possess a legal definition of absinthe, distillation is the only permitted method of production. Distilled absinthe employs a method of production similar to that of high-quality gin. Botanicals are initially macerated in distilled base alcohol before being redistilled to exclude bitter principles, and impart the desired complexity and texture to the spirit. 
the distillation of absinthe first yields a colorless distillate that leaves the alembic at around 72% ABV. The distillate may be reduced and bottled clear, to produce a blanche or la bluey absinthe, or it may be colored to create a vert using natural or artificial coloring. Traditional absinths obtain their green color strictly from the chlorophyll of whole herbs, which is extracted from the plants during the secondary maceration. This step involves steeping plants such as petite wormwood, hyssop, and melissa in the distillate. Chlorophyll from these herbs is extracted in the process, giving the drink its famous green color. Preparation this step also provides a herbal complexity that is typical of high-quality absinthe. The natural coloring process is considered critical for absinthe aging, since the chlorophyll remains chemically active. The chlorophyll serves a similar role in absinthe that tannins do in wine or brown liquors. After the coloring process, the resulting product is diluted with water to the desired percentage of alcohol. The flavor of absinthe is said to improve materially with storage, and many pre band distilleries aged their absinthe in settling tanks before bottling. Many modern absinths are produced using a cold mix process. This inexpensive method of production does not involve distillation, and is regarded as inferior in the same way that cheaper compound gin is regarded as inferior to distilled gin. The cold mixing process involves the simple blending of flavoring essences and artificial coloring in commercial alcohol, in similar fashion to most flavored vodkas and inexpensive liqueurs and cordials. Some modern cold mixed absinths have been bottled at strengths approaching 90% ABV. Others are presented simply as a bottle of plain alcohol with a small amount of powdered herbs suspended within it. Styles Storage Health Effects The lack of a formal legal definition for absinthe in most countries enables some cold mixing producers to falsify advertising claims, such as referring to their products as distilled, since the base alcohol itself was created at some point through distillation. This is used as justification to sell these inexpensively produced absinths at prices comparable to more authentic absinths that are distilled directly from whole herbs. In the only country that possesses a formal legal definition of absinthe, anything made via the cold mixed process cannot be sold as absinthe. Absinthe is traditionally prepared from a distillation of neutral alcohol, various herbs, spices, and water. Traditional absinths were redistilled from a white grape spirit, while lesser absinths were more commonly made from alcohol from grain, beets, or potatoes. The principal botanicals are Grande Wormwood, Green Anise, and Florence Fennel, which are often called the Holy Trinity. Many other herbs may be used as well, such as petite wormwood, hyssop, melissa, star anise, angelica, peppermint, coriander, and veronica. Adding to absinthe's negative reputation in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, unscrupulous makers of the drink omitted the traditional coloring phase of production in favor of adding toxic copper salts to artificially induce a green tint. This practice may be responsible for some of the alleged toxicity historically associated with this beverage. Many modern-day producers resort to similar shortcuts, including the use of artificial food coloring to create the green color. Additionally, at least some cheap absinths produced before the ban were reportedly adulterated with poisonous antimony trichloride, reputed to enhance the luching effect. Absinthe may also be naturally colored pink or red using rose or hibiscus flowers. This was referred to as a rose or rouge absinthe. Only one historical brand of rose absinthe has been documented.
Absinthe was historically bottled at 45 to 74 percent percent ABV. Some modern Franco-Swiss absinths are bottled at up to 82.3 percent ABV, while some modern cold mixed Bohemian style absinths are bottled at up to 89.9 percent ABV. Controversy. The modern-day interest in absinthe has spawned a rash of absinthe kits from companies that claim they produce homemade absinthe. Kits often call for soaking herbs in vodka or alcohol, or adding a liquid concentrate to vodka or alcohol to create an ersatz absinthe. Such practices usually yield a harsh substance that bears little resemblance to the genuine article, and are considered inauthentic by any practical standard. Some concoctions may even be dangerous, especially if they call for supplementation with potentially poisonous herbs, oils, and slash or extracts. In at least one documented case, a person suffered acute kidney injury after drinking 10 ml of pure wormwood oil a dose much higher than that found in absinthe. In baking, perno anise is often used as a substitute if absinthe is unavailable. In preparing the classic New Orleans-style Sazerac cocktail, various substitutes such as pastis, perno, richard, and herb saint have been used to replace absinthe. The traditional French preparation involves placing a sugar cube on top of a specially designed slotted spoon, and placing the spoon on a glass filled with a measure of absinthe. Iced water is poured or dripped over the sugar cube to mix the water into the absinthe. The final preparation contains one part absinthe and three to five parts water. As water dilutes the spirit, those components with poor water solubility come out of solution and cloud the drink. The resulting milky opalescence is called the louche. The release of these dissolved essences coincides with a perfuming of herbal aromas and flavors that blossom or bloom, and brings out subtleties that are otherwise muted within the neat spirit. This reflects what is perhaps the oldest and purest method of preparation, and is often referred to as the French method. The Bohemian method is a recent invention that involves fire, and was not performed during absinthe's peak of popularity in the Belle Epoque. Like the French method, a sugar cube is placed on a slotted spoon over a glass containing one shot of absinthe. The sugar is pre-soaked in alcohol, then set ablaze. The flaming sugar cube is then dropped into the glass, thus igniting the absinthe. Finally, a shot glass of water is added to douse the flames. This method tends to produce a stronger drink than the French method. A variant of the Bohemian method involves allowing the fire to extinguish on its own. This variant is sometimes referred to as cooking the absinthe or the flaming green fairy. The origin of this burning ritual may borrow from a coffee and brandy drink that was served at Café Brulotte in which a sugar cube soaked in brandy was set aflame. Most experienced absinthe viewers do not recommend the Bohemian method and consider it a modern gimmick, as it can destroy the absinthe flavor and present a fire hazard due to the unusually high alcohol content present in absinthe. In 19th century Parisian cafés, upon receiving an order for an absinthe, a waiter would present the patron with a dose of absinthe in a suitable glass, sugar, absinthe spoon, and a carafe of iced water. It was up to the patron to prepare the drink, as the inclusion or omission of sugar was strictly an individual preference, as was the amount of water used. As the popularity of the drink increased, additional accoutrements of preparation appeared, including the absinthe fountain which was effectively a large jar of iced water with spigots, mounted on a lamp base. This let drinkers prepare a number of drinks at once and with a hands-free drip, patrons could socialize while luching a glass. 
Although many bars served absinthe in standard glassware, a number of glasses were specifically designed for the French absinthe preparation ritual. Absinthe glasses were typically fashioned with a dose line, bulge, or bubble in the lower portion denoting how much absinthe should be poured. One dose of absinthe ranged anywhere from around 2 to 2.5 fluid ounces. In addition to being prepared with sugar and water, absinthe emerged as a popular cocktail ingredient in both the United Kingdom and the United States. By 1930, dozens of fancy cocktails that called for absinthe had been published in numerous credible bartender guides. One of the most famous of these libations is Ernest Hemingway's Death in the Afternoon Cocktail a tongue-in-cheek concoction that contributed to a 1935 collection of celebrity recipes. The directions are as follows, pour one jigger absinthe into a champagne glass. Add iced champagne until it attains the proper opalescent milkiness. Drink three to five of these slowly. Most categorical alcoholic beverages have regulations governing their classification and labeling, while those governing absinthe have always been conspicuously lacking. According to popular treatises from the 19th century, absinthe could be loosely categorized into several grades, in order of increasing alcoholic strength and quality. Many contemporary absinthe critics simply classify absinthe as distilled or mixed, according to its production method. And while the former is generally considered far superior in quality to the latter, an absinthe's simple claim of being distilled makes no guarantee as to the quality of its base ingredients or the skill of its maker. Absinthe that is artificially colored or clear is aesthetically stable and can be bottled in clear glass. If naturally colored absinthe is exposed to light or air for a prolonged period, the chlorophyll gradually becomes oxidized, which has the effect of gradually changing the color from green to yellow-green, and eventually to brown. The color of absinthe that has completed this transition was historically referred to as folumort. In the Preban era, this natural phenomenon was favorably viewed, for it confirmed the product in question was colored naturally, and not artificially with potentially toxic chemicals. Predictably, vintage absinths often emerge from sealed bottles as distinctly amber in tint due to decades of slow oxidation. Though this color change presents no adverse impact to the flavor of absinthe, it is generally desired to preserve the original color, which requires that naturally colored absinthe be bottled in dark, light-resistant bottles. Absinthe intended for decades of storage should be kept in a cool, dry place, away from light and heat. Absinthe should not be stored in the refrigerator or freezer, as the anethole may polymerize inside the bottle, creating an irreversible precipitate and adversely impacting the original flavor. Absinthe has been frequently and improperly described in modern times as being hallucinogenic. No peer-reviewed scientific study has demonstrated absinthe to possess hallucinogenic properties. The belief that absinthe induces hallucinogenic effects is at least partly rooted in the fact that following some 10 years of experiments with wormwood oil in the 19th century, the French psychiatrist Valentin Magnin studied 250 cases of alcoholism, and claimed that those who drank absinthe were worse off than those drinking ordinary alcohol, having experienced rapid onset hallucinations. Such accounts by opponents of absinthe were cheerfully embraced by famous absinthe drinkers, many of whom were bohemian artists or writers. Regulations Australia. Two famous artists who helped popularize the notion that absinthe had powerful psychoactive properties were Toulouse Lautrec and Vincent van Gogh. In one of the best known written accounts of absinthe drinking, 
an inebriated Oscar Wilde described a phantom sensation of having tulips brush against his legs after leaving a bar at closing time. Notions of absinthe's alleged hallucinogenic properties were again fueled in the 1970s, when a scientific paper suggested that Thujone's structural similarity to THC, the active chemical in cannabis, presented the possibility of THC receptor affinity. This theory was conclusively disproven in 1999. Brazil The debate over whether absinthe produces effects on the human mind in addition to those of alcohol has not been conclusively resolved. The effects of absinthe have been described by some as mind-opening. The most commonly reported experience is a clear-headed feeling of inebriation a form of lucid drunkenness. Chemist, historian, and absinthe distiller Ted Bro has claimed that the alleged secondary effects of absinthe may be caused by the fact that some of the herbal compounds in the drink act as stimulants, while others act as sedatives, creating an overall lucid effect of awakening. The long-term effects of moderate absinthe consumption in humans remain unknown, although herbs traditionally used in the production of absinthe are reported to have both pain-killing and antiparasitic properties. Canada European Union Finland France Georgia Germany Italy New Zealand Sweden and Norway Switzerland United States Vanuatu Cultural influence Today it is known that absinthe does not cause hallucinations. It is widely accepted that reports of hallucinogenic effects of absinthe were attributable to the poisonous adulterants being added to cheaper versions of the drink in the 19th century, such as oil of wormwood, impure alcohol, and poisonous coloring matter. It was once widely promoted that excessive absinthe drinking caused effects that were discernible from those associated with alcoholism a belief that led to the coining of the term absinthism. One of the first vilifications of absinthe followed an 1864 experiment in which Magnon simultaneously exposed one guinea pig to large doses of pure wormwood vapor, and another to alcohol vapors. The guinea pig exposed to wormwood vapor experienced convulsive seizures, while the animal exposed to alcohol did not. Magnon would later blame the naturally occurring chemical thujone for these effects. Thujone, once widely believed to be an active chemical in absinthe, is a GABA antagonist, and while it can produce muscle spasms in large doses, there is no direct evidence to suggest it causes hallucinations. Past reports estimated thujone concentrations in absinthe as being up to 260 mg/kg. More recently, published scientific analyses of samples of various original absinths have disproved previous estimates, and demonstrated that only a trace of the thujone present in wormwood actually makes it into a properly distilled absinthe when historical methods and materials are employed to create the spirit. As such, most traditionally crafted absinths, both vintage and modern, fall within the current EU standards. Tests conducted on mice to study toxicity showed an oral LD50 of about 45 mg thujone per kg of body weight, which represents far more absinthe than could be realistically consumed. The high percentage of alcohol in absinthe would result in mortality long before thujone could become a factor. In documented cases of acute thujone poisoning as a result of oral ingestion, the source of thujone was not commercial absinthe, but rather non-absinthe related sources, such as common essential oils.
One study published in the Journal of Studies on Alcohol concluded that high doses of thujone in alcohol had negative effects on attention performance in a clinical setting. It delayed reaction time, and caused subjects to concentrate their attention into the central field of vision. Low doses did not produce an effect noticeably different from the plain alcohol control. While the effects of the high-dose samples were statistically significant in a double-blind test, the test subjects themselves were unable to reliably identify which samples contained thujone. For the average 65 kg man, the high-dose samples in the study would equate to 18.2 mg of thujone. The EU limit of 35 mg L of thujone in absinthe means that given the highest permitted thujone content, that individual would need to consume approximately 0.5 liters of high-proof spirit before the thujone could be metabolized in order to display effects detectable in a clinical setting, which would result in a potentially lethal BAC of 0.4%. Most countries at present do not possess a legal definition of absinthe. Accordingly, producers are free to label a product absinthe or absinthe, whether or not it bears any resemblance to the traditional spirit. Absinthe is readily available in many bottle shops. Bitters may contain a maximum 35 mg kg thujone while other alcoholic beverages can contain a maximum 10 mg kg. The domestic production and sale of absinthe is regulated by state licensing laws. Until July 13, 2013, the import and sale of absinthe technically required a special permit, since oil of wormwood, being an essential oil obtained from plants of the genus Artemisia, and preparations containing oil of wormwood were listed as Item 12A, Schedule 8, Regulation 5H of the Customs Regulations 1956. These controls have now been repealed, and permission is no longer required. Absinthe was prohibited in Brazil until 1999 and was brought by entrepreneur Lalo Zanini and legalized in the same year. Presently, Absinthe sold in Brazil must abide by the national law that restricts all spirits to a maximum of 54.0% ABV. While this regulation is enforced throughout channels of legal distribution, it may be possible to find absinthe containing alcohol in excess of the legal limit in some restaurants or food fairs. In Canada, Liquor laws concerning the production, distribution, and sale of spirits are written and enforced by individual provincial government monopolies. Each product is subject to the approval of a respective individual provincial liquor board before it can be sold in that province. Importation is a federal matter, and is enforced by the Canada Border Services Agency. The importation of a nominal amount of liquor by individuals for personal use is permitted, provided that conditions for the individual's duration of stay outside the country are satisfied. In 2007, Canada's first genuine absinthe was created by Okanagan Spirits Craft Distillery in British Columbia. The European Union permits a maximum thujone level of 35 mg kg in alcoholic beverages where Artemisia species is a listed ingredient, and 10 mg kg in other alcoholic beverages. Member countries regulate absinthe production within this framework. The sale of absinthe is permitted in all EU countries unless they further regulate it. The sale and production of absinthe was prohibited in Finland from 1919 to 1932, no current prohibitions exist. The government-owned chain of liquor stores is the only outlet that may sell alcoholic beverages containing over 5.5% ABV, although national law bans the sale of alcoholic beverages containing over 60% ABV. 
Despite adopting sweeping EU food and beverage regulations in 1988 that effectively relegalized absinthe, a decree was passed that same year that preserved the prohibition on products explicitly labeled as absinthe, while placing strict limits on fencone and pinacamphone in an obvious, but failed, attempt to thwart a possible return of absinthe-like products. French producers circumvented this regulatory obstacle by labeling absinthe as spirituixa based a plant's de-absinthe, with many either reducing or omitting phenyl and hyssop altogether from their products. A legal challenge to the scientific basis of this decree resulted in its repeal, which opened the door for the official French re-legalization of absinthe for the first time since 1915. The French Senate voted to repeal the prohibition in mid-April 2011. It is legal to produce and sell absinthe in the Republic of Georgia, which has claimed to possess several producers of absinthe. A ban on absinthe was enacted in Germany on March 27, 1923. In addition to banning the production of and commercial trade in absinthe, the law went so far as to prohibit the distribution of printed matter that provided details of its production. The original ban was lifted in 1981, but the use of Artemisia absinthium as a flavoring agent remained prohibited. On September 27, 1991, Germany adopted the European Union standards of 1988, which effectively relegalized absinthe. Unlike Switzerland and France, there are no further restrictions. The fascist regime in 1926 banned the production, import, transport, and sale of any liquor named Asensio. The ban was reinforced in 1931 with harsher penalties for transgressors, and remained in force until 1992 when the Italian government amended its laws to comply with the EU Directive 88-388-EEC. Although absinthe is not prohibited at national level, some local authorities have banned it. The latest is Matora in Southland. The ban came in August 2008 after several issues of misuse drew public and police attention. One incident resulted in breathing difficulties and hospitalization of a 17-year-old for alcohol poisoning. The particular brand of absinthe that caused these effects was bottled at an unusually high 89.9% ABV. The sale and production of absinthe has never been prohibited in Sweden or Norway. However, the only outlet that may sell alcoholic beverages containing more than 3.5% ABV in Sweden and 4.75% ABV in Norway, is the government-owned chain of liquor stores known as Systembolaget in Sweden and Vinmonopolet in Norway. Systembolaget and Vinmonopolet did not import or sell absinthe for many years after the ban in France, however, Today several absinths are available for purchase in Systembolaget stores, including Swedish-made distilled absinthe. In Norway, on the other hand, one is less likely to find many absinths since Norwegian alcohol law prohibits the sale and importation of alcoholic beverages above 60% ABV, which eliminates most absinths. In Switzerland, the sale and production of absinthe was prohibited from 1910 to March 1, 2005. This was based on a vote in 1908. To be legally made or sold in Switzerland, absinthe must be distilled, must not contain certain additives, and must be either naturally colored or left uncolored. In 2014, the Federal Administrative Court of Switzerland invalidated a governmental decision of 2010 which allowed only absinthe made in the Val de Traverse region to be labeled as absinthe in Switzerland. The court found that absinthe was a label for a product and was not tied to a geographic origin. In 2007, 
the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau effectively lifted the long-standing absinthe ban, and it has since approved many brands for sale in the U.S. market. This was made possible partly through the TTB's clarification of the Food and Drug Administration's Thujone Content Regulations, which specify that finished food and beverages that contain Artemisia species must be Thujone free. In this context, the TTB considers a product Thujone free if the Thujone content is less than 10 ppm. This is verified through the use of gas chromatography mass spectrometry. The brands Kubler and Lucid and their lawyers did most of the work to get absinthe legalized in the U.S. over the 2004 to 2007 time period. In the U.S., March 5th sometimes is referred to as National Absinthe Day as it was the day the 95-year ban on absinthe was finally lifted. The import, distribution, and sale of absinthe is permitted subject to the following restrictions. Absinthe imported in violation of these regulations is subject to seizure at the discretion of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Beginning in 2000, a product called Absenti was sold legally in the United States under the marketing tagline Absinthe Refined, but as the product contained sugar, and was made with southern wood and not grande wormwood, the TTB classified it as a liqueur. The Absinthe Act 1915, passed in the New Hebrides, has never been repealed, is included in the 2006 Vanuatu Consolidated Legislation, and contains the following all-encompassing restriction, the manufacture, importation, circulation, and sale wholesale or by retail of absinthe or similar liquors in Vanuatu shall be prohibited. Numerous artists and writers living in France in the late 19th and early 20th centuries were noted absinthe drinkers, and featured absinthe in their work. Some of these included Edouard Manet, Guy de Maupassant, Amadeo Modigliani, Arthur Rambo, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, Paul Verlaine, Vincent van Gogh, Oscar Wilde, and Emile Zola. Many other renowned artists and writers similarly drew from this cultural well, including Alistair Crowley, Ernest Hemingway, Pablo Picasso, and August Strindberg. The aura of illicitness and mystery surrounding absinthe has played into literature, movies, music, and television, where it is often portrayed as a mysterious, addictive, and mind-altering drink. Absinthe has served as the subject of numerous works of fine art, films, video, music, and literature since the mid-19th century. Some of the earliest film references include The Hasher's Delirium by Emil Call, an early pioneer in the art of animation, as well as two different silent films, each entitled Absinthe, from 1913 and 1914 respectively. <laughs>